welcome back to the Soil Health Connection. We're here with Brandy Murphy from NRCS Calusa Field Office. Um, I know Brandy pretty well, but Brandy, could you introduce yourself to the audience? Absolutely. First of all, thank you for having me. This is an exciting opportunity just to kind of be engaged in the conversation and share a little bit about why I really love my job. I um, have been with the agency since October of 2018, so coming up on two years here, but um, I graduated with my master's in environmental science at UNR, University of Nevada, Reno, my undergraduate in agricultural sciences with a minor in business administration. So I am very focused on uh, agricultural production and I understand that it is a business and um, also the impacts that we have on our natural resources. Now, although my master's was in, in environmental science, it was very uh, interdisciplinary um, uh, project that I participated in. I actually focused on the use of soil amendments to increase above ground biomass production on ultimately various field crops, but I focused on red leaf lettuce. So it was interesting, but I'm here because I really like to see the difference that my job makes in real time for producers and um, just helping people help the land, which is our motto for NRCS. In your role as soil con um, in Calusa County, um, what resources does NRCS have that is relevant to local producers interested in improving soil health? Absolutely. So we have a different, we have a few different uh, programs, and then our initiatives within those programs tend to vary slightly from year to year. So we have the Environmental Quality Incentives Program, um, which is what I do most of my work with. And that is basically when a producer is interested in uh, utilizing some of our conservation practices to improve their soil health, they would come to the office and we would start developing a rapport. And with that comes a conservation plan. And if they're interested in applying for funding, we would move through the application process. It is competitive. So if they are awarded the um, application, we would move through to contracting and practice implementation. And that's when the real benefits are realized, when we're able to um, help them employ more sustainable practices. We also have our conservation stewardship program. Uh, as opposed to EQIP, our CSP program is typically five years and EQIP is three years. So um, those are just two different ways that we can kind of build suites of practices together to address the resource concerns uh, for producers. Um, we also really have a great time. My most fun part of the job, my most favorite part of the job is providing technical assistance. Um, there's no contracting involved, uh, no, no application, but it's where producers who are truly interested in starting the conversation come in and we start looking at the soil on their land, uh, the, if it's rangeland, the plant community and structure, uh, grazing, we start looking at all the elements of their operation and just providing them technical assistance to meet the goals that they come in wanting to address. So um, there's that. And then we also have a lot of resources online. And uh, before COVID hit, we would participate although not host, but participate in a lot of um, workshops and seminars. Um, and we work with our community alliances to really invite producers to that. So, That's so awesome. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's so awesome. Uh, Brandy, thank you so much for sharing all that with us. Um, in all of your really vast experience working with our local producers around implementing soil health, what are some of the barriers to implementing these practices that you've observed both for cropland and also for rangeland in our in our Sacramento Valley area? Yes, so 
First and foremost, uh, I would say it would be a technological, like a knowledge barrier. Um, a lot of producers don't know where to start. Mm -hmm. So that's why I really love the technical assistance aspect of our job because it's just a conversation and it, it encourages them to keep pressing forward with um, utilizing the knowledge and, and putting it to their operation. Uh, the second barrier that I would highlight would be um, your, the possibilities of foregoing income based on yield. So if we want to implement a cover crop, for example, um, we're going to suggest that they don't need to implement so many inputs. So they would be concerned about the effect of that on yield, for example. Um, and then also, it really takes a few years to build on cover crops, to build on the soil health so that you can start realizing the benefits, like your, your reduced need for inputs, um, like fertilizers, pesticides, even water. Mm -hmm. And so it's that, that lag period where producers are really uncertain and uncertainty is a risk that we all try to mitigate right but um i think farmers are unusually adapted to mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, dealing with the risk so yeah. those are just a couple things <laughs> wow, thank you so much we see that as well um and when a producer does walk into your door in your office and is or i guess now probably calls you virtually since your office may be closed with COVID, but when you, when a producer does have an interest in the technical assistance or financial assistance for a conservation practice, can you talk a little bit about, a little bit more specifically about what that process is like um, and how, what can, what, what can kind of a producer expect if they, if they want to engage with you around um, the vast array of NRCS programs you described? Yes, absolutely. So uh, the initial contact is, them explaining to me generally what their ideal project would entail and then we would schedule an initial field visit and before that initial field visit I would kind of do my homework I would pull up on web soil survey their soils um, any historical use for the property or ecological site descriptions and I would really try to get an understanding of the the property before going out there and then we would meet for our initial field visit we'd discuss their resource concerns their goals and objectives obviously their um their production so their what they do and then um kind of i try to gauge where they want to be in five years in ten years what's their ideal uh, place that they want to be and then try to gauge how much uh, time they have to devote or to use for implementing these practices. So cover crops, for example, I keep using that because we're talking about soil health, but that obviously requires planting and rearing and termination, right? So, so how much time do they have to devote to all the operation and maintenance, basically? Mm -hmm. So yeah. those are all very important things. And then when we get um, a pretty good grasp on where they want to go and the concerns they want to address, then I'll put together some um, practices and alternatives. And I have found that uh, I use a cost benefit analysis for the producers because it's really important that they understand um, what it is we're looking at and what that means for them on their bottom line. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that's invaluable for them to make a really informed decision. So they, I present them with the alternatives and we make a selection and we move forward with planning. Absolutely, that's so great. Um, what's the most exciting change of practice that you've seen implemented in Calusa County? So, I would say there, there's been an increase in producers inquiring about soil health building practices. So, organic matter, water infiltration, nutrient retention and utilization. Um, and a big one for us, especially in the southern portion of the county here, has been um, 
keeping the soil covered so that when we do get our natural precipitation events, you keep the soil, the topsoil, where it is. It around here, um, especially with the increase in um, conversion to orchards, there's the tendency for the water to move very quickly across the landscape and that that removes quite a bit of our topsoil. So that is an issue and a lot of producers are asking how to prevent that from happening. So um, the increase in that has been really exciting. And then also just their openness. My producers are really open. So I have producers that come in and want to implement a new irrigation plan in irrigation um, system and it'll oftentimes be on a new orchard and um, for walnuts or almonds you know you you have a few years where you can't harvest and that's a really important time to uh, potentially implement cover crops to for the soil organic matter building um, potential there and so a lot of my producers are open to that and um, I just appreciate their willingness to kind of go out on a limb from something they're not used to doing and try something new and they're pleasantly surprised. Yeah. So I just have to do a little local plug for Brandy. Um, I've gone out on a couple of field visits with you and you're amazing. You're a gem to have in our county and an excellent resource. And um, I love that technical assistance is one of your favorite parts of the job because it is so valuable and it is such an untapped resource that um, we have in Calusa County through our NRCS. And then the other thing that I, that made me think of it is that Sarah Light um, is also this local resource. And so for all of the Calusa mm -hmm. County producers out there, we have on this screen two women that um, that are just here for implementing or just brainstorming conservation practices or um, agronomic um, questions or um, ways uh, to improve your farm. And, um, you know, where I come in is this is around a soil health project or a demonstration site. And so um, soil health hopefully would be in your conversations. Um, but um, with that said, thank you both for just the work you do in Calusa County. I'm a big fan. You, Liz. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and then, Sandy, is there anything else you'd like to add? There is, actually. Thank you for asking. So I wanted to um, also let all of our producers and just community members in general know that NRCS has a soil health website. So mm -hmm. if you Googled Natural Resource Conservation Services California, that would take you to our California specific soil health website. We also, ha also have the national website, mm -hmm. but um, I love the NRCS soil health newsletter. So if, if you're interested in getting that in your inbox, go check it out. Uh, there's a lot of California farmers share their stories in videos, um, a lot of information. So obviously I'm here for that technical assistance, but this will also help prime the discussion. So if you wanted to have a real down to earth discussion about what we can do for your property and your, um, your, your farm or your ranch, then that's a good place to start, especially related to soil health. And just on a closing note, ladies and everybody, um, there's so much that we don't know. With all of the research that our universities provide, that our, that our producers um, kind of figure out on their own, which is a huge part of this, and then also from NRCS, we know something like 1% of 1% of what goes on underneath the soil. We are just barely scratching the surface. <laughs> funny. Um, so it's, it's really just a continuous process of learning and engagement. And the, the bigger we grow our community, the more information we can transfer and the better the realizations will be. So 
let's just return to kind of what our grandpas knew and before the green revolution really happened right so we were we were using these soil health practices that that left more in the soil than we took out and um we're slowly making our return to that so knowledge is power here yeah yep wow yes well thank you so much and we'll be i'll be seeing you real soon <laughs> yes <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Yeah.